Hello, welcome to the summer 2024 edition of my Android Studio tutorial series. Let's create an Android app. So the first thing we need is Android Studio. You can download it from developer.android.com slash studio. It's about a gig. It's available for free on Windows, Mac, and Linux, maybe even Chromebook. It's about a gig, so go ahead and s install that. And uh, I'm gonna skip this. So assuming you have it installed already, once you open it up, and you've downloaded everything that's required, you'll get to this screen. So projects, let's create a new project. Empty activity is fine. Next, we'll call this RSS reader because I like RSS readers. Everything else can be the same here. Call this Kotlin DSL and we can go ahead and hit finish. And I already have an emulator set up here. I've described how to do that in previous videos. Um, but if you uh, don't know how to do that, uh, really quickly, it's over on Device Manager. A couple ways to get to this, and um, you can go here, create virtual device. You can select a Pixel 8 phone or whatever, next, 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 and just create that. And then hit the play button to run it. I already have it set up here just to save some time, and I think it's already connected as well. You can also stop it with that, but um, yeah. So, or you can use your physical phone, use USB to plug it in, make sure the screen is on, you need to approve something, um, you need to approve the connection to your computer. So Gradle is building, so give this a second to finish up. And we'll go ahead and write some code. I made my font really big here, so hopefully you all can see it. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and I like to run it very often. So I've saved this and uh, main activity just opens up right there. So let's go ahead and run this. So let's go to run, run app and go to your emulator or physical phone. Again, set that up as I told you to do it. Um, it's over there. You can just create a new virtual device and uh, Gradle build is running. So it'll take a second to build this app. And then it should show up on this device. And this emulator is just a real world uh, like device that you can use for testing. I mean, you can use Chrome, you can browse the web, do everything with a physical phone. So it looked like that finished and it didn't run here just a second. Let's, I'm just gonna stop it for a second. I think it might not have, might not have been connected. So let's go ahead and run this again. Run, run app and Give it a second to open up. Let's not do that. Uh, let's let's try running this one more time. Don't send. Here we go. Okay, so this should open up and this should display our app. Let's hope. Emulator problems. Um, you know what? Let's just stop it there and let's run it again. Okay, sorry. One more time. Run, run, and let's see if picture it up. Okay, here we go. So here's our app, and again, the emulator, I always get confused with stuff, but here's our app. It just says, hello, Android. So let's close those panels. I think the emulator just got hung up for a second. And where it says greeting, open up, yeah, so open up app, Kotlin Java, and then open up main activity, and let's start writing some code. So let's go to right here, and let's type, let's create a new variable, let's call it val, let's call it uh, people equals list of, John, Jack, DJ, and Luke, Matt, just some random names. And this is a variable, it means that can be called anything you want, and it's a list of strings. Okay, so let's go down here and let's go ahead and just comment all that out. Actually, let's not, let's, we'll just leave it there. Let's do lazy column, and here we go. So inside set content view, um, this is normally where we uh, specify an XML layout, but we are going to use Compose for this. So um, and then inside of RSS uh, reader theme, uh, then there's a screen which is there by default. Um, just put it right below, we'll put lazy column. Now let's actually display our list of users on the screen. Let's do item, items, and then let's pass in the people. Here we go and it's giving us an error. So whenever you see an error, uh, whenever you see the red squiggly line, you can click on it and do option enter. In this case, I think I just needed to import something. So if I do command Z, yeah, whenever you see errors like the red line, a lot of times just click on it and do 
alts, enter, and it'll import the stuff that you need. Again, on Windows, that might be alts, um, alts, enter. Okay, so, so what this is going to do is it's going to take the people's variable that we have up there and it's gonna loop through them. So every time it's gonna loop through that right there, in this case, five times. So if we actually run it right now, you'll see nothing has changed. It's just the same app because we haven't actually displayed it. So let's use Compose. Let's create a new um, function. Let's call this uh, list item and we'll pass in it. And it is the uh, person in this case, it is going to be the person that um, it, it's iterating over. So for example, John, Jack, DJ, each time it loops over, it will um, it will equal that. You can also in Kotlin do variable, you can call it um, name, and then use the name there. That's the same, but it's IT is just the default there. So, we don't, so it's giving us an error there. We haven't actually created the list item yet. So let's go to the bottom of the screen and let's create a compose function. Let's do composable uh, and just, um, if you type part of it, you can always do control spacebar and then hit enter and that's how it will show up there. So let's do fun list item and this is how you create a function in Kotlin. So let's do that and there we go. So we have our, we have our um, item there but we actually have an error and if you do um, F2 it'll actually take you to the error and it's right there so basically if you put your mouse over there it's saying that we're passing list item a variable but we're not accepting it so go ahead and click on the IT the red squiggly line do option enter then just add parameter to function list item so now if we do uh, command click there we'll see that we have a string so let's go ahead and type this uh, name and so this means it's com it's a compose function that's just the uh, random function that's the it, that's the sim that's the symbol symbol that um, shows it's a method this is can be whatever you want it to be in this case we called it list item and then it's going to take a name which is a string so text so if we were to run this, it should give us no errors, but it's not actually going to display the text. So in our composable block here, let's do this. Let's type text, and that's the one that we want. It'll prompt you, and you can just click on it and select it. And text, this is where you can type a string or something. So you can always just type something just to put it on the screen. And if you run it, you'll see we have five ASDFs. So in this case, we want to actually make the text equal to what we pass it, which is the name. Let's go ahead and save that and run it. And what you'll see there is we have, okay, we have the list of, uh, we have the, sorry, we have our names listed there. So what can we do here? Let's go ahead and um, I'm going to actually do that because I like that formatting better. And so what we see is we have our, let me back up a second. So yeah, our composable, this is listing over all of our items. And so let's go ahead and work on the design. Let's create a card. So let's type in the first line here of list items, let's type card and that's what we want. And let's move this text, let's cut it and let's put it inside of this card so we're actually nesting things so our function that's the outer that's the outer ring then we have our card and then we have our text there and if I run this you should see that we have little cards so that's, that's actually funny so they're actually super super small so let's we want the card to be full width so we can define parameters for our card uh, let's do modifier equals modifier and by the way I'm just typing a little I'm just typing a few uh, letters and it automatically um, prompts you with autocomplete just hit enter modifier dot fill max size and let's run this again and this should make the card full width uh, let's also add some padding as well so we can actually chain onto there so let's do another enter let's do dot padding and let's do um, 24.dp. 
Now you'll notice again, the DP gives us an error. So go ahead and click on there, do option enter, import that, then run it again. And this should look a little bit nicer. This should look like actual cards. So um, mm -hmm. let's actually add some padding. Oh yeah, so the padding that actually added it, so we'll do just 12 DP there. What we actually want is we want, we want the padding around the text. So let's go ahead and do something here. Let's go into our text, uh, our text item there, and let's do modifier equals modifier dot padding, and let's do 12 dot DP again. So run this with control R, or again, just run, run, and that will run the app for us. Here we go, so we have a nice list. Uh, what I wanna do is actually, I'm gonna increase that to 24 just so we have some more room. And I wanna go up to your items and make sure that it's actually listing all of them. So I'll paste that there, I'll do a comma, and then just paste it again a couple times. Again, we just want a list of, a long list, so it will actually scroll. And this works. Um, white space doesn't matter so we can just as easily do that and that would work as well but i just put it all in the same line let's run this and then we should have our list of items and it actually scrolls through here so here's our list of items and again very quickly we could um, create a list here and so i want to do a couple more things i want to add maybe a photo for each person as just so we can get like some placeholder text in there so let's do this. Um, try to think. Um, okay, let's go ahead. Oh, okay. So let's actually let's first. So I want to what I want to do is want to add a photo of the person like right there. So let's go to resources drawable. We can actually right click on there and go to new. And I think. I think it's a vector asset, yeah, clip art. So let's just click on there and let's type person and we'll just create that, that's fine. What this does is this will import a kind of default uh, placeholder image into the app and we're calling it baseline person 24 because that's just the default name. We can call it anything that we want to and that will work. Let's hit next and then finish. And then you'll see it actually adds it to our project there. So baseline person 24. There it is, there's our person, and I want to just close that or just hit the X there. That's fine. So let's go ahead and go close that again. Um, we have our card there. I wanna do image this time. So an image, image. Yeah, I think that's it there. And I'm gonna format this just because I like to do it this way. And again, white space doesn't matter. We'll put anything there and anything there. In this case, it's basically saying the image, it wants a painter or kind of the actual, um, the actual, the actual, what am I trying to look for? The actual like image, so image.jpg. That's kind of what we wanna do here. But then for a content description, Let's go ahead and do, we'll just put, um, and this is like for screen readers, people who are blind, can't see, we'll do photo of person. And then here, I think it's resource paint, um, painter resource. And for this, the ID, and again, by the way, the uh, autocomplete is really gonna help you out. So just type a few characters like painter resource, hit enter and it'll fill it out for you. So in this case, we want R dot drawable because it's in the drawable folder right there. And then we put a dot baseline person 24. And if you recall, that is the exact same, that's the exact same what we titled it when we just created there. I'm going to actually, I know I like it like this. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm a big fan of running it very often. So let's run it just to see what it looks like. So we have uh, a person there. So it's really small and it's in the top left. So let's do this. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So modifier equals modifier dot width and we'll do 100 dot dp dot and we'll chain it so we can actually put another dot so put dot height and do 100 dot dp that's how you do it in compose this is all compose functions 
and it should be a nice big person. So what we want to do is I want the person to the left and I want the name to the right. And so let's go ahead and do that. We can actually, inside of our card here, let me close that. So we have our card. So the card starts there and it goes to right there. We essentially want those two items to be in a column or a row. So let's go right inside of the card. Let's do this. Let's do um, column. And that's good. And I actually want to put all of this other stuff inside of it. So I'm going to select this text. And you can actually select a lot of text and do the tab key, and it will tab it all over. Oops, there we go. So now we have our card, then we have our column inside of there. And inside of our column, we have the image, our image there, and then we have our text there. So we go ahead and save that and let's run it. Actually, I think what I wanted was, uh, sorry, let me move this over a second. What I wanted actually was a row. So let's go ahead and save that. Wait, I didn't. Um, yeah, so I typed it out fast, I didn't import it. So let's go ahead and click on there, do option enter, and that'll import it. Then let's go ahead and run it. And this should put our person on the left and our name to the right. And it's, again, it's a big list of people. So this is about all I wanna cover in this video. This video is officially done. You can look for my next video, which I'll try to post sometimes later. So this video is done, just to be clear. But if you want more of an explanation of why this works, keep watching and I'll go through it really quickly. So first we did is we created our new, we created our new Android app and it created all the files for us. So whenever you open up an Android app, it loads main activity. That's just uh, another word for a screen there. And it runs this on create method. The first thing that we did was we created a list of people. And again, you can do that with just list of and then provide um, whatever you want inside of there. In this case, that's integers, or we can do strings with double quotes, as many as you want. And we created our people list. Next thing we did is we created, we put in there a lazy column, and then we had our items iterator. And so we pass it people, and if you command click on there, it just references this right there. And so what this items is gonna do is it's gonna loop through the people variable however many times we have. So in this case, we have like maybe 20 names. So it's gonna do everything from there to there 20 times. And on each iteration, which um, specifies a name, it's gonna give us the variable. So the first one will be John, the next one will be Jack and DJ. So each time this loops, this gives us a new variable. So. Uh, and this is a compose object here, so just command click on there and it'll take you down to the bottom. Um, you always annotate it with composable for your compose item. And then function, that basically just means it's a new function. List item, and we're passing it the name. So that's actually important. So if you go here, we're actually passing it the name. And the first thing we do here is we created a new card. And the card is basically just the gray part right there, and we can style it differently and style it however we want. Um, we did inside of their modifier, we wanted it to be full width, because I think without that, it only did to, it only uses up how much room it needs. So in this case, the DJ is a little bit shorter than the jack, so it makes it a little bit smaller. We made it full width, and again, the card is full width, not the name or the image, the card itself is. And so inside of our card, the card opens up there and it closes, I think, that one right there. So inside of there we did, uh, first we put an image in a text view, but we actually ended up doing a row instead. And uh, we put our image and text uh, composable objects or compose objects inside of there. And this is normally how you, normally how you'd create this is with an XML with um, XML files. But again, we're using Compose for this project, so we're not even gonna mess with XML. And yeah, the row, you can do column if you want, or row, in this case we wanted a row. And we have our new image item, or image object painter to specify an image. And then that's just, uh, you can set it to like a screen reader defaults. And we made the width and height 100%. And again, you don't specify this like um, you don't do um, 100 dp. You do the integer and then a dot, then dp. And that's a, a little uh, Kotlin function for you, by the way. 
So that all works. And I think that's about it for the video. So yeah, this past few minutes was just going more in depth if you needed to know how stuff actually works. Uh, we'll continue on in the next video. I'll see you there.